Hi. Welcome. Thank you. Happy to have you here. Okay. Why Happy to be here. <laughs> why don't we start with an easy question? Okay. Why don't you tell me about what you do at Autodesk? Sure. I'm the principal product manager for animation and rigging at Autodesk. Awesome. So can you share a bit more about your career journey and what led you to Autodesk? Sure. Yeah, I worked in production for many years before I joined Autodesk. I was a Pixar animator and character technical director. I worked at uh, Weta on the Avatar production. I worked at DreamWorks on Madagascar. And, Megamind movies. I worked at um, Industrial Light and Magic on Star Wars Episode One way back in the day. I'm dating myself now. Some pretty iconic projects. Oh, thanks. Yeah, fun projects to work on for sure. Awesome. So, as someone who is developing tools for animation studios, can you share a bit about some challenges that they might be facing now that you know you might not have faced back in your days? Yeah, it's a different world today for sure. Uh, the, the degree of complexity has gone through the roof. Uh, every artist wants to be able to interact with full hero geometry, full textures. And they want to do it at 24, 30, 60 FPS these days. So it's definitely a different world in terms of the quality bar um, and just the amount of content that needs to be produced. Like the quotas are insane these days. Um, so, you know, probably three to five times what it was when I, when I was in production. So you mentioned the need for animation studios to keep up with this soaring demand for content. Mm -hmm. For artists and creatives that are watching, what are some workflows in Maya that you think keep artists in the creative groove? To keep artists in the creative groove, we have to have a fully interactive experience. Like artists have to be able to work with hero resolution, geometry, full textures in a great viewport and, and, and to be able to interact with those characters in real time. So we made a ton of investment in animation performance over the years, starting with parallel evaluation to take advantage of multiple CPUs. And then we entered the era of GPU accelerator deformers to take advantage of all these expensive GPU hardware that are out there. Uh, and then more recently, uh, uh, memory. So taking advantage of all the RAM on a machine to do things like animation, background caching, uh, and other preloading uh, tasks. We're also trying to just make it easier for artists to make creative decisions with final looking assets. So a modern UI connecting to the rest of the production, being able to work with realistic and you know, final looking textures, um, all in, at interactive speeds. So a lot of the work that we've done introduces uh, performance improvements, but also usability improvements. So we did a lot of work on the timeline, the time slider to just reduce the number of clicks and the mouse travel and all that kind of stuff. Also to give a better motion trails experience for animators so they can judge the arcs and the flow of their poses over time. We put in a whole bunch of work on the custom evaluator for that. It's over 100 times faster than it was before. Um, it also lets you have different draw styles and attach them in different parts of the character and multiple motion trails at once. Just really went to town on that feature. We also introduced the Dope Sheet, which is a really cool editor for retiming your poses, gives you a precision mode so you can edit not just the keyframe values on the current point in time, but also in future and past points in time um, without changing the viewport pose at all. We introduce things like custom selection sets. So if you're working on a particular part of the character, say you're animating Buzz Lightyear's hands, you can set up all the different commonly used controls for the hands of that character in an animation selection set, and then reuse that in other shots, share those selection sets with other animators working on that character in your scene, rather than having to pick this body part, animate that, pick a different body part, animate that. We're bringing all that together so it's much more efficient. So over the past few years, we've seen a rise in open standards, uh, a particular interest in OpenUSD. As you know, Autodesk is a part of the Alliance for OpenUSD, or AOUSD for short. Um, can you tell us a little bit about AOUSD and why it's so important? Sure, yeah, the Alliance is trying to further USD as an open standard, not just for the m and &E industry, but well beyond that. Uh, so uh, trying to standardize data, but also how applications work with that data. So last year, Autodesk released LookDevX, which is an agnostic material authoring plugin that currently supports OpenUSD data model natively in Maya. So break it down for me, Lance. What is LookDevX, and how can this new workflow enable animation studios to be more successful? Sure, yeah. LookDevX is a major upgrade to material authoring in Maya, which we're all very excited about but it allows for native authoring of USD content. So an artist who authors a material uh, with LookDevX in a procedural, modern 
uh, UI can take that, uh, that, that asset and move it to another DCC without any type of conversion. So as long as the other applications support USD, the data that you author in Maya moves over seamlessly to other applications. Oh, interesting. Autodesk is making a large investment in USD. This, of course, means native workflows in Max and Maya, but also in, in products like Motion Builder, where now you can load USD stages in Motion Builder, you can manipulate them uh, right alongside your Motion Builder animation. We're also working on open USD for animation curves. This is a collaboration with Pixar and the steering committee for USD. Of course, the Alliance for Open USD is involved in this as well. Uh, but we're really trying to standardize uh, animation curve representation across all DCCs. So animation data becomes portable. As long as your target uh, application supports OpenUSD, then you don't have to do any kind of data conversion to get your animation curves over. Awesome. And are there any benefits to other industries for USD, or is it strictly a media and entertainment benefit? Yeah, there's a benefit for OpenUSD for animation in other industries. Um, everyone needs to work with data over time, so um, it makes sense that you would need to represent that in a standardized way. So Lance, as you know probably from experience, making an animated film is truly no small feat, um, especially because you have various teams, departments, studios, all working together, yeah. and certainly sometimes across different countries or time zones. So how can studios better track things like assets, shots, deadlines, budgets, you name it? So you can track budgets and shots and deadlines in flow production tracking, formerly ShotGrid, uh, and that hooks up to Maya uh, currently. So assignments and artists' tasks are communicated by flow. Um, so artists can see what they need to work on that day, what notes they have, um, and what the next departments are for the assets that they're building. So Lance, how does the work that you do and your team does, how does it help artists automate tedious tasks? Yeah, we want to take the tedium out of the creative process for sure. Uh, part of that is giving artists a modern UI, um, but also automating some of the things that are more technical that we could just take off of the hands of the creator. One of those things is the deformer chain manager. Uh, previously, if you wanted to change the order of your deformations for a particular character, you would have to do some plumbing. You have to open up the node editor, take the inputs of this, and reroute them to the inputs of another. Uh, node in the graph. Uh, now, just with a simple UI, you can just drag uh, deformers into the order that you want, and we take all that plumbing away uh, for you. So they're no longer plumbers, but really just artists. Right, yeah. <laughs> they can focus on the character that they're building and the deformations of that character and the poses and, and that awesome. sort of thing. Another way we're trying to take the tedium out of um, artists' day-to-day -day tasks is an investment in AI and ML. So we're looking at what ML can do for deformation of characters, for automatic posing and timing. So it's an exciting area for sure. So talk to me about the ML Deformer. What is it and why should people care? Yeah, super excited about the ML Deformer. It allows an artist to take a complex deformation chain and simplify that. Uh, so you train a model and you end up with a single deformer that approximates that very complicated deformation chain and that uh, approximation runs a lot faster. So the characters become more interactive um, and also portable. So you can take that single ML deformer and represent it in another context without having to take all of Maya's complicated deformation chain with all the different types of deformers and represent that in another context. So Autodesk Flow is Autodesk's vision for the future of production. It's going to connect people, workflows, data from onset to final delivery. What does Flow mean for animation studios? Okay, so Flow has all of the rich production data, like you just mentioned, the shot information, alternate versions, and so forth. So we're gonna take that and bring it to the artist who's working in Maya so that they can stay in context. They can see shots before and after, they can see alternate versions of their shot. So what was the layout intent? What was the storyboard intent of my work? Without changing context, they don't have to leave Maya and go open up a different application somewhere. They can visualize that right in the viewport. I think that's really powerful. Yeah, I think people are going to be very excited about the future. Yeah, me too. <laughs> you, me. Okay. But I do have a final question for you. Okay. And this one's actually a hard question. Okay. Who do you think would win in a fight? Stuart Little or Remy from Ratatouille? Remy, for sure. Yeah. Why do you, why do you choose Remy? <laughs> well, he's, just, he's just got an earnestness and a 
a conviction that you can't ignore. Yeah. I agree. I'm also a big Remy fan. So. Yeah, yeah. You picked that because I worked on that character, didn't you? No, okay. I didn't. All right. <laughs> He's cool. like the home team. I have to root for him. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> well, Lance, thank you for joining us. It was a pleasure having you on set. We all look forward to what your team has to bring for you know future years. Yeah, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Back to work.